Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presents Alfred Drake and Jackie Kelk in Bullseye for Sammy. Scores of better things for better living are made by DuPont from salt, the same white crystals that you use three times a day on your dining table. After melting salt and breaking it down into its elements, sodium and chloride, DuPont makes many compounds that are essential in war and highly useful at home. These go into tetraethyl lead, an important ingredient of high-octane gasoline, into sodium cyanide, which is used to harden steel, into textile bleaches and dyes, and into pharmaceutical chemicals used by Army and Navy doctors, all produced by the chemist from salt. Tonight, DuPont presents Bullseye for Sammy, starring Alfred Drake as Lieutenant Alfred Helper and Jackie Kelk as Sammy Bryan, a kid from the cinder lots of Jersey. Our play is the factual story of Sammy Bryan and his personal war against the Axis. How he joined the Navy and was sent to the Submarine Chaser Training Center at Miami where he ran up against Commander E.F. McDaniel. It's also the story of Lieutenant Alfred Helper, skipper of PC-627, the little boat that fired the first shot, a shot before H hour, in the invasion of Sicily on July 10th, 1943. DuPont presents Alfred Drake as Lieutenant Alfred Helper and Jackie Kelk as Sammy Bryan in Bullseye for Sammy, written by Lawrence Schwab, on the Cavalcade of America. This is the Submarine Chaser Training Center on the Miami Bayfront. It is a Monday morning in March, 1942. The new batch of men from recruit camp, boots they're called, has just arrived. From schools, factories, farms, and pool rooms, they've come down here to the tip of Florida for their first lessons in seamanship. And here they are, lined up on the beach, being instructed by a chief petty officer. Now, you guys, watch my hands. The first thing to know is to how to tie up your ship. There. Now, this here is a bowling, see? Here, you try it, sailor. You with the curly hair. Here, take the line, it won't bite you. Oh, I can do it, but what's it good for? What's it good for to tie up? Wait a minute, Boot, what's your name? Brian, Sam Brian. Brian, huh? How old are you? 17. Oh, 17, huh? Yeah, that's right, and no cracks. Because when I'm an old pot like you, I'll know more than how to tie a couple of hunks of string together. Son, I don't think you're going to enjoy the Navy. Why'd you join up for anyone? Because I don't like to walk. Oh, so you don't like to walk, huh? Well, let me tell you something. Tension. Good morning, Commander Tendon. Good morning, Chief. As you were, man. Showing them how to tie a bowl, and I see. Among other things, yes, sir. Looks mysterious, that knot, doesn't it? Yes, yes sir. sir. Well, men, at first, many things about the Navy will seem mysterious to you. Especially why you're in this outfit, and uh, I don't blame you. You know, there was a time when the men on the big ships of the Navy thought our little boats were only eggshells. And uh, just about as useful. But after a while, they found out different, and so did the enemy. And uh, so will you. Lots of things are different now. But some of them are still the same. It used to take months and sometimes years to build a big ship. You can build a big ship in 72 days now. But it still takes 21 years to make a man. And that's what we aim to make out of you fellas before we get through with you. Men. Men to fight subs, to sink them, and to keep on sinking them. This is a personal war. When you're out there alone on combat duty, it's what you've got against what the enemy's got. In ships, in tactics, and in personal courage. There's nobody to call on for help. So remember that while you're going through this training. What you're learning today or tomorrow may be the difference between victory and defeat for your ship between life and death, for you. That's what it's like in a personal war. That's all. Carry on, Chief.
Hurry up, sailor. You'll be late. I'm in no hurry. What's your name? Brian. What's yours in case I should ever be interested? I'm Jenks. Tom Jenks from Indiana. Say, I hear that gunnery officer, Lieutenant Helper's, done plenty of combat duty. Well, if he likes to fight so much, what's he doing here? I ain't never yet heard of a naval battle on dry land. I hear he's only here for a short while. Hey, he's... pipe down. You guys are late. See me after class. All present, Lieutenant Helper. Very well, Chief. This, man is the breech block of your three-inch gun, the gun you use against enemy subs on the surface. Now, this is the pointing mechanism, this is the training, and into the breech goes this type fixed ammunition. What a I'll pipe that, that guy's got. Shooting the breeze in Miami it's while the smokes are getting chucked full of useless dope. This Just to go out and get shot at. Hey, Jersey, I want to listen. Besides, look at them ribbons. Three engagements. So what? Pipe down, you men. If you don't want the dope, keep quiet while the others get it. You there, what's your name? Brian, sir. Well, Brian, read that sign on the wall out loud. Yes, sir. To all instructors, is some youngster going to return to haunt your conscience because you didn't prepare him? Get hot. Commander McDaniel put that there. <laughs> what a school. They ball out the teacher instead of the pupils. <laughs> Four weeks go by, four hard weeks of training. Ten hours a day, seven days a week. With this preliminary instruction period over, Sammy is assigned to his new home, PC-627. In command is the same Lieutenant Helfer who had been Sammy's instructor in gunnery. PC-627 is about to start on a cruise in the Gulf Stream on battle practice. Lieutenant Helfer and his second in command, Ensign James, are standing on the bridge. General quarters, Mr. James. General quarters, sir. Quartermaster, sound GQ. Aye, aye, sir. Ready for action, sir. Okay, Mr. James. Everybody seems to know their stations. Secure from general quarters. Secure from general quarters. Secure from general quarters. All secure, sir. Very well. Resume cruising speed. Course, 172. Coming on 172, sir. Ah, oh, uh, General Quarters. A fourth time today, and yesterday, and the day before. Me carrying a thousand pound fuel drum around like I was a truck. And for what? Just says the big gold-braided punk up there on the bridge can watch us sweat. I carry the other half of the drum. Don't forget that, Jersey. What do you think we have general quarters for? So we'll know what we're doing when we get the real thing. You just open your mouth too often, boy. Go lie down and cool off. That's what I'm going to do, Farmer. Lay down right here in the sun till we hit the beach. Uh, uh. General quarters! Oh, come on, sailor. Rise and shine. The fuel tank calls. I got enough of this, Navy. I got more than I can take. What are you going to do about it? Write to Admiral King? Wait till the end of this cruise. Wait till my little footsies touch dry land again. You just wait. You, you going AWOL? I don't know what you call it, but I sure would like to see New Jersey again. <laughs> And at the very next opportunity, Sammy Bryan went AWOL. But a boy in Uncle Sam's sailor suit can't wander around long without question. And pretty soon, Sammy found himself back in Miami, under arrest, and about to appear before Commanding Officer McDaniel. Hey, hey you, Bryan. They're ready for you now. Oh, what? What'll they do to me? Well, they always do to court martial. First, Commander McDaniel gives you the third degree. Then they cut off your ears. Then they put you in the brig for ten years. And then... Okay. In you go. Brian. S. Seaman, second class, sir. Step up, Brian. Give me his record card. Yes, sir. Born October 2nd, 1925, enlisted Weehawken, New Jersey, October 3rd, 1942. That makes you uh, 17 and one day when you enlisted. Uh, what were you waiting for? My birthday was on a Sunday. <laughs> 18 days, AWOL, eh? Where have you been? Up oh, seeing my woman. Seeing your woman, eh? I'm ready to take my medicine. Sure, you are tough, I can see that. Sure you weren't homesick, son? Sure you didn't go home to Weehawken? 
Did my ma write you? So you were home. What if I was? Oh, what do I get? Well, uh, since you came up to my office and asked for leave... Oh, but I didn't... Sure I... you did, sailor. Don't you remember? Guess I forgot to notify Lieutenant Helper, your CO, that I wanted to... Uh, granted you... Uh, let me see now. Oh, yes. I granted you 18 days. But... But, but I... you got back in time, didn't you? Here. Take this money. Phone your mother. Tell her you're not in the brig. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Brian's Home Laundry? Hello, Ma. This is me. Sammy, didn't you go back? Where are you? Now, don't choke, Ma. I'm in Miami. Look, did you write Commander McDaniel? No, Sammy. What'd he do to you? He put me back on my boat. He's got his nerve, just where he said you wouldn't go. He's no good. Uh, no, Ma. I changed my mind about him. He didn't put me in the brig or nothing, see? I prayed, Sammy. Yeah, yeah. I sure thought this here Mac was too tough a guy to listen to anything like that. Well, look, Ma, I'm on a sub-chaser now. A sub-chaser? You mean you go underwater? Uh, no, Ma, that's a sub. We chase him. Underwater? You go underwater after him? No. You see, a sub-chaser is a boat that chases subs when they come up to the surface. Oh, they come up for you to chase them. Look, Ma, I'm on a sub-chaser, see? And when you're on a sub-chaser, you... Well, you... The rest is a military secret. Goodbye, Ma. Goodbye, Sammy. Take care of yourself. I will, Ma. Goodbye. Lieutenant Helfer, skipper of PC-627, would like to speak to you, Commander McDaniel. Come in, Mr. Helfer. Yes, sir. How's everything aboard? Ship shape, thank you, sir. Uh, just one thing. I've got a tight little ship, and I hate to have anybody aboard that doesn't want to be there. Oh, yes. You mean Brian. Report it, has he? Well, yes, sir. He's sulking already. Well, look, Mr. Helfer, he's just a kid. Brought up on a beer bottle. Had to eat a lot of dirt on the way up, so he's bound to spit out some. But I think you can straighten him out. Say the word, and I'll transfer him. Oh, but, well, uh, I guess I'm stuck with him, sir. Thanks, Helfer. Here, take this with you. Orders. We sail tonight, huh? That's great. Hit him hard, Lieutenant. Then when you get sick of it, start all over and hit him again for me. Yes, sir. Everybody aboard, Mr. James? All checked in, sir. Uh, here's Brian. Wants to talk to you. Hello, Brian. Welcome back aboard. What's on your mind? That's this, see? I don't like being no cook's helper. That's what they put me on. That ain't no man's work. Well, show me you can do better, Brian, and you'll be shoved up. You got a pretty good score on the three-inch guns till you ducked out on us. Oh, so you're holding that against me. Well, I might have known you... That'll do, Brian. Stand by to let go your stern line. Standing by your stern line. Stand by your bow line. Standing by bow line, sir. Look, sir, at least I stand to get a decent bed, don't I? Got me shoved up in a lousy hole with my chest under a steam pipe. If I breathe hard, the whole lousy boat comes down and socks me. Now, that ain't you what I... You don't like your bunk, huh? Too crowded. Well, sailor, maybe these ships are a little crowded. But there's no room for a heel on them. Remember that. Let go off! All gone off! Let go your bow line! All gone port! We're in the clear. I'll take her, Mr. James. She's yours, skipper. PC-627 is now at sea in the Mediterranean, where in July 1943, German subs were still taking their toll of Allied shipping. On the bridge, the skipper and Ensign James are munching away on the same old monotonous rations. Same chow again. Mm. You not only have to eat it till it runs out of your ears, but they make jeeps out of the cans and you're riding them. <laughs> the crew's been griping too, as usual, but they... You sort of rounded into a good bunch, don't you think, Skipper? Best crew I ever had, James. First and best. You know, that kid Brian's coming along, too. Yeah, Max said he'd be all right. He belly ached plenty about going below to his battle station when we got that sub, but he went. Well, that's the worst station aboard, down there in the hole by the gyro compass. Somebody's got to be down there. Hey, huh? listen. 
Plane, sir. Bearing 315. I, I can just make them out. General Quarters. Looks like bombers. Yes, sir. Quartermaster, sound General Quarters. Aye, aye, sir. Can't you hear everybody? Get going! Look, guys, look at that splash. Look at it. Oh, boy, that's fancy steering. Look at that crooked wake we're kicking up. Keep moving over there. Come on. Hey, guys are aiming at us. Hey, Jinx, duck, duck quick. I'm staying here at my gun. Our 50 caliber's knocked one down, I can finish him. When they come over again, get them in the aircraft things going, you don't. Get Bill out of your post, Brian! Oh, I miss all the fun. I said, get Bill out of your post! Aye, aye, sir. That's the end, I guess. We had plenty of luck that time, James. Sure. Skipper, you rode her like a bronco. Oh, here comes Sparks running with a radio message. What next? Radio, sir. Just came over. Thanks. Proceed at once to previously advised base to operate with fleet in landing operations. Landing operations? This is it, Mr. James. This is what we've been waiting for. Invasion. <laughs> You are listening to The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont, maker of better things for better living through chemistry, presenting Alfred Drake as Lieutenant Alfred Helper and Jackie Kelk as Sammy Bryan in Bullseye for Sammy. Still stubbornly hating the service, Sammy, who explained that he joined the Navy only because he didn't like to walk, still has his troubles confirming with Navy discipline and routine personally convinced that he's the best gunner in the Navy, he finds himself aboard a sub-chaser as a cook's helper. It is the night of July 9th. PC-627 is ordered to shove off from the fleet of transports and warships drawn up five miles off the southern coast of Sicily and to proceed with 24 LCVPs loaded with infantry to the beach near Jela. She is now taking in the first wave of landing barges, the feeler outers. Lieutenant Helfer, her commander, is watching for fires on the hills, fires set by paratroopers who had gone over at midnight. These, scheduled for 0230, were to give him a landmark. It is now 0240. Somewhere forward out of the dark, comes the voice of Ensign James, whose job is to keep the landing barges in line on either side. Easy! That's it. Easy does it. Hey, you, starboard knife, where do you think they're going? To a fire? That's better. You're all in a row now. Gosh, it's dark. Look speed? at down there, Jinx. Huh? Them jeeps piled in so tight they have to hold their guns in the air. <laughs> Look at them dog faces hanging over the side. They're seasick, the dumb landlubbers. Ah, Jersey, don't go to talking about the army that way. They're our allies, just as much as Russia or China. <laughs> Keep a sharp lookout for fires, Mr. James. Yes, sir. Fires due at 0230. It's 0242. I wonder if those paratroopers... How are your barges, Mr. James? Under control, sir. Fire sighted. Where? Where? Dead ahead. Up high. There's another one. There's another one. Three fires. I see three. Okay, I see them. We popped it on the nose, Mr. James. We're on the right beach. Get the crew into helmets, sidearms, and pass out grenades. Life belts, too. If they hit us bad, I'll run around the beach. We'll operate as rangers. Get every man at his battle station. Yes, sir. Battle stations, men! Battle stations! Battle stations! Hey, Skipper, can I come up and talk to you? Looks like you're here already, Brian. Skipper, we won't need no gyro compass in here by the shore. What? No, I guess you're right. What about it? Well, could I stay up on deck by one of the guns just in case? You're expected to stand by your station. Yes, sir. Oh, wait, Brian. Here, get on this battle phone to the engine room, just in case. Yes, sir. I'm on it, sir. Don't blow those life belts up too tight, men. You'll choke yourself. Watch it. Watch it. Hey, engine room. Hey, you black gang. 
This is your reporter, Sammy Brown, broadcasting from the bridge. Pipe down, Brian. Uh, yes, sir. Everybody at battle station, sir. Look, Jamesy. That searchlight. It's from their shore batteries. It's going over our barges in by the beach. Yeah. It's coming toward us. They'll get on us in a second. Here it comes. They got us in the beam. No. It's passing on. They missed us. The searchlight just passed over us, Black Gang. Hey, you hear me down there? They missed us. This is your ace reporter, Sammy Bryan. Stand by for more news. Shut up. Here it comes again. It's on the barges. They see him, Alfred. They must see him. Ready on the bow gun. Get a range on that light. Who's pointed there? Me, Jake, sir. Here it comes. Here comes the light again. It's on us. It's staying on. They got us full. And the barges, too. Oh, 255, five minutes before HR. Nuts. I'm not going to wait. We can't. Not with that light on. I'm going to commence firing. Bow three inch. Knock out that light. Fire at will. Come on. Bear a hand. Bear a hand. I said fire at will. Jake can't move, sir. He's all tied up in his life belt. Yeah, his life belt's caught. His life belt's caught, sir. I told that idiot. James, we can't last a minute with that light full on us. They'll get the range. It might throw over the whole invasion timetable. Brian, get a man on that gun. Hey, what's the matter with me? Okay, but snap into it. I'm snapping. We better be moving out of this, Skipper. We're a duck. We're a duck sitting on it. And a... leave those barges unprotected? Don't be a... Three on bow, three inch, sir. Commence firing! The light's out! He got her, Skipper! He did it! Well done, <laughs> Brian! Well done! <laughs> And there it is, Jamesy, the fleet pouring it on. Just what we've been waiting for. That's us. HR is here. Hey, nice going, Jersey. It was right on the nose. Uh, that was a full-size Sammy boy. Did you boy. think you were going to plug it, Sammy? Certainly I thought I'd plug it. The first shot, that was to get my range. The second shot had a label on it, see? It was from Commander Mac, and it said... This is a souvenir from Sammy Bryan's personal war. Well, Cookie, what do you think of your assistant now? Well, all I can say is from now on it looks like you're going to be a problem. Look, Skipper, here come more barges in from the fleet. Oh, will you look at the tanks on them. Boy, they're loaded, all right. Go on in, boys. The water's fine. Here come our barges back. Uh-huh. All of them. They made it. Yep. The armies are showing now on their own. PC-627. PC-627. Flagship calling you, Skipper. PC-627. Return to transport area. Pick up LCs. Proceed to beachhead. Over. Signalman. Yes, sir? Tell flagship we'll pick up LCs and proceed to beachhead. Aye, aye, sir. Okay, back we go for some more army. Flagship, calling PC-627. CO, coming in. Well done, 627. That searchlight, I mean. That was good shooting. Very good shooting indeed. Say, that's the Admiral. Sounds like he's impressed. Yeah. I wonder how young Brian is taking it. Say, Jamesy, come over here quick. Yes, sir. Look down there. See him? Well, I'll be darned. That's Brian, all right. And you see what he's doing? Little punk is actually taking a bow. Just a minute, boys. He's going to make a speech. I thank you, Admiral. Gentlemen, I thank you one and all. All I want to say is, it was just my duty. Anyone could have done it, Admiral. That is, anyone with an eye like mine. Oh, my heaven. Thank you, Alfred Drake and Jackie Kelk. In presenting tonight's play, DuPont sends its best wishes to the officers and men of the submarine chasers. Our story tonight was based on the actual part played by one of these sub-chasers and its gallant crew in the landing on the beaches of Sicily. Now, before we tell you about next week's play, here is Clayton Collier speaking for DuPont to tell you how chemistry is helping to clothe our army. After the war, we may wear double-decker clothes because the Army is learning some new things about how to dress soldiers which may change our clothing habits. A new cold-weather combat uniform designed to give protection against low temperatures, rain, sleet, and snow 
and at the same time give freedom of movement, is now being issued on a limited experimental basis to troops in cold climates. This new uniform, developed by the Quartermaster Corps, is based on the layering principle, as the Army calls it. When the weather grows colder, the soldier adds extra clothing in layers instead of changing to an entirely different suit. The newly designed jacket of the uniform is made of tightly woven cotton, treated with a durable water repellent like DuPont Zeeland. This jacket looks more like a coat with a drawstring at the waist to make room for layers underneath. The jacket alone serves for moderate climates. When the weather grows colder, the soldier puts on an under jacket with a cotton shell, long sleeves, a knitted collar and cuffs, and a pile lining. Then he wears the new cotton jacket over it. When it grows bitterly cold, as it does in Alaska and parts of our country, he adds still another outer layer called a white parka, also made of cotton. The Army says the new jacket can replace five different types of jackets now in use, among them the popular field jacket. Trousers, too, are worn in layers. First an inner pair of wool trousers, and then over the wool trousers still another pair, made of the same tightly woven cotton sateen as the jacket. This sateen, says the Army, is light in weight, wind-resistant, and also has excellent water-resisting characteristics. The same DuPont Zeeland which makes your jacket raincoat or your child's snowsuit repel water is adding to the all-weather efficiency and comfort of soldiers at the front. These durable water repellent finishes are an important factor enabling the army to use cotton and introduce the layering principle in the new experimental uniform. After the war all of us may change our clothing habits and wear in wintertime not heavy outer garments but cotton outer clothing that will still provide warmth without weight, thanks to Zeeland Water Repellent, one of the DuPont better things for better living through chemistry. Next week, Cavalcade will present James Gleason in a radio play as human, as sympathetic, and heartwarming as a letter from your boy at the front. Our play is adapted from the current bestseller by that ace war correspondent, Ernie Pyle, and stars James Gleason as Ernie Pyle in the dramatization of his best-selling book, Here Is Your War. James Gleason will also be starred as Ernie Pyle in the forthcoming motion picture version of this story. DuPont invites you to listen next Monday evening when Cavalcade presents James Gleason as Ernie Pyle in Ernie Pyle's Here Is Your War, a dramatization of the recently published best-selling book of the same name. Cavalcade is pleased to remind its audience that Alfred Drake, one of the stars tonight, is currently appearing in the musical success Oklahoma and is to be heard in his own radio program, Broadway Matinee, broadcast every weekday afternoon on another network. The orchestra and musical score tonight were under the direction of Donald Voorhees. This is Carl Frank sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.